Welcome to part two of my series on the installation of the Johnny Bucket Jr. on my John Deere X590. In part one, we reviewed the unboxing and looked at the instructions and the basic construction of the bucket and uh, even did a little minor assembly of the uh, actuator for the dump bucket. The weather's gotten a lot warmer now, so um, up about me 40 degrees, and so now it's time to do the install on my tractor. Check out this powder coating. The guys did a brilliant job. I'm going to leave a link in the description of our local powder coating company. I'm pointing out the fiber washer that I added and didn't come with it. Basically, those two plates kind of scrape against each other initially, so I wanted something to keep that from happening. But at gloss black, that looks really nice, and it matches, obviously, the frame of the tractor. The frame of the tractor is kind of a semi-gloss, but I guess when they get dirty, they'll all match. But it looks a lot better than the flat black. And here's my John Deere X590. First part of this project is to pull the front bumper slash weight hanger off and replace it. There's four 14 millimeter bolts that go through the frame into the threaded holes of that front bumper. There's also a little 8 millimeter bolt that you have to pull off to loosen the heat shield. Who needs an electric ratchet when you can spin that fast? <laughs> I wish. Next time I'm going to have some kind of a cordless tool to do this. Off comes the bracket. So here's the replacement assembly. And I'm just kind of looking at it right now, making sure that all the holes line up, everything looks good. The JB Junior Company does a, they must use some kind of a water jet or something like that to cut these things because those holes are like perfect. Everything lines up. I'm just checking for clearances behind. So let's install this thing. Make sure I have it the right way. You can't flip this upside down or the hood hinge pins won't line up. There's two little slots the hood hinge pins attach to. They have to be on the top. Yeah, remember, this is my first time I've ever done anything like this, so I check, check twice, check three times just to make sure I'm doing this right. Okay. Hopefully you can see this. In the picture, you can see that the bolts are coming from behind. I don't know how the heck you can do that. Because you'll see how tight it is from the, um, from the back. I'm going to move the camera. Okay. You can't get your, you can get at the back of this bolt, but you gotta kinda, I don't know how you're gonna get a wrench in there. But this bolt here, there it is. This bolt here, there's no way you can get behind there. So I ran it through the front. These are threaded. They've cut the threads in, in all of these these four in the back, so I'm using the threads that are existing. So, we'll see how it goes. 
In the instructions, on the left side, back part of the bracket, you're to use the existing hole that's in the frame, which is nice. On the right side, however, the instructions warn you that there might not be a hole. So they got to drill one out. On top of that, we have to be very careful of a hydraulic line that's used for the power steering. So here we go. We're going to drill this out using a 3 8 inch bit. And I'm running the drill slow. Um, I saw somewhere on the internet that basically you don't want to try and harden the steel by running it and getting it too heated up. So I use WD-40 for a lubricant. And I'm being gentle when drilling this out. And actually it's cutting pretty quick, so I guess the advice works. I got to be careful. There's that, that hydraulic hose behind there. So I don't... It's not over the hole but I gotta make sure that I don't you know punch through and route around and hit that hose take it nice and gentle and there we go we're through Just want to double check to make sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm still clear. Hose is above the hole. I'm going to clean it out here. And I'm through. Use the supplied bolt. All my sockets are metric, as I was saying before. These turn out to be 14 millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry, 15 millimeter. The bolts that hold the front portion of the bracket, the factory ones, are 14. Oops. There we are, good and tight. Now I'm ready for the front face plate. This is the part where the lift actuator connects. Slides in between the two brackets that we just installed. Now, if you notice those little odd-shaped kind of triangle brackets, those are for the optional assembly to hold the brush guard. Uh, my tractor has a brush guard, so I paid the extra to have those brackets. The bolt goes through that brush guard bracket into the front faceplate bracket. There's four bolts holding it on. If you didn't have those optional brackets, it would just the bolts would go through the main side brackets into the faceplate. Now this little odd shape thing is for the assembly that holds the hood open and it provides the pivot point for the hood. There's two slots in the new bracket that when we first installed in the tractor that these little pivots mount to. 
and there's a D-ring inside that the hood hinge clips into. You can see how the hood just kind of slides over the top of them. So I'm sliding the hood on now. Part of that holds the hood assembly open. This is an excerpt from my main video. It was shortly after I put on the hood, I noticed that it wouldn't open all the way. See, it would get about 90%, but it wouldn't stay open. It was hitting something. So I wanted to try and figure out what was going on. After a little inspection, I noticed that the front face of the hood was hitting a flange on the faceplate that holds the lift actuator. You can see how it kind of flexes and binds. If it could just go like a few more inches, it would stay open. And this is where I discovered it right there. I'm like, oh yeah, there's where it's hitting. So I moved the camera so I can get a close up of it, see exactly where it was hitting. Notice where the John Deere script is. It hits right there. You can see it bounces, so it won't stay open. Kind of a bummer, but since it's Saturday, I decided to continue with the installation and call Johnny Products on Monday. Following the owner's manual, or the instructions manual actually, it says to measure four and a half inches on the bottom of the actuator and turn counterclockwise to have the actuator expand out so you can get that bottom eyelet to four and a half inches. These things don't, you can't pull them with your hand so you can only screw and unscrew them. They're pretty easy. pin with a cotter goes up on the top, actually a clip, and then the cotter key goes on the bottom. There's two of those um, spacers on the bottom that keeps the uh, bottom of the actuator centered. The top one is, is free to move. Now we're going to slide on the bucket. Just two large bolts hold that. The bucket's not light, but it's not super heavy either. I'd say about, with that actuator on there, about 65 pounds. So I put a little board on there to make it the same level as where the, ac the bracket is right now. And then you just run those two bolts through and tighten them down. I think on my metric set, set, these bolts are 18 millimeter. Again, I'm sure US sizes work on that too, but uh, all I have is metric right now. Okay, it's all on. I've got the switches installed already. And I temporarily run the wires so that we can test out the bucket. You don't need the tractor running to test it, but I want to preserve my battery. It's, it's very cool. You'll notice that the dump actuator moves much faster than the lift actuator, and that's on purpose. I'll have another shot up here 
showing the switches and how I mounted them. Which is a little different than what they say in the instructions. You notice they're very close together. My goal was to be able to move both switches at the same time so that I could lift and curl at the same time. Easier said than done. It'll take some practice, but I think I'll get the hang of it. See, I'm trying to curl and lift at the same time. See, some people go for the joystick, but the joystick is either up and down or curl. Um, there's no like in between, like on a hydraulic joystick, where you can do both at the same time. So my hope was with the two switches close together that I could use my thumb and my fingers to kind of do both at the same time. I'm kind of clumsy at it now, but... Notice when I have the bucket curled, I can lift the front end of the tractor. It's very strong. Very cool. Wow turned out pretty darn good. It's too bad about the hood hitting that bracket, but I've been in communications with Johnny Products and I think we'll come to some kind of resolution. But the, the bucket system works really well and it's very strong. I, I can't wait to use it. I'm waiting for the weather to get a little warmer so that I can start my projects. When that happens, I'll try to video as much as I can and post it. The goal of this was to give folks like me who didn't know much about it the opportunity to see and experience the installation and use of the Johnny Products bucket. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. I read them because I'm not that big of a YouTuber so there can't be that many comments. Thanks again for watching.